Welcome to Monday, and uh, so here's here's how Monday's going to work. Uh, today's going to be crazy um, with, uh, with with games. We're going to have nine of them. Um, I'm going to the Vancouver game tonight, for instance, and uh, the rest of the week is going to be um, weird. Uh, Tuesday, we got one game. Wednesday, we got 14. Thursday, we got zero. Friday, we got 15. Saturday, we got 14 or 11 or I don't know, either, anyway, it's going to be a really, really, really quite busy few days with a one-day rest in between. So, odds are, by the end of this week, things could look quite different than they do at the start of this week. So, just throwing that out there. Um, first up, as I said, I'm going to go see the Winnipeg-Vancouver game. Winnipeg's 11-5-2. They look really good. Vancouver looks like they've played 22 games already, and uh, it's it's been it's been a rough schedule, and now they get Winnipeg. Glorious, um, leading the way in, in in the scoring category for Winnipeg is Blake Wheeler with three goals, 21 assists, followed by Shifley at 10 goals, 10 assists, Kyle Connor nine goals, seven assists, Bufflin has two goals, 11 assists, Line A eight goals and three assists. Ehlers, four goals, four assists. Morrissey with a goal and seven assists. Truba with a goal and seven assists. On the Pittsburgh side of things, Patterson, 11 goals, seven assists. He finally got on the score sheet last game. Uh, Horvat, 10 goals, eight assists. Erickson, four goals, eight assists. Besser with four goals, seven assists. Goldobin, two goals, nine assists. Vertanen with eight goals, two assists. Granlin, four goals, six assists. And Hutton has four goals and four assists for the Canucks. All right, took a nice pause there in order to see which goalies had been confirmed and which ones hadn't yet. Um, and there's no confirmed goalies in the game between uh, Vancouver and Winnipeg, so I'll speculate that uh, the, the the start goes to, to Hellebuck. That being said, uh, it, it, it could very well be Brassois. Brassois is 3-0-1, 1.47 goals against 959 save percentage. And they may look at Vancouver and say, this is a game we should be able to win. They've been having trouble scoring lately. We'll go ahead and throw in the backup. Hellebuck, 8-5-1 record, 2.72 goals against, 9-15 save percentage. On the Vancouver side of things, Markstrom, 7-6-2 record, 3.27 goals against, 8-97 save percentage. He'll be starting. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't, unless Nelson magically recovers. Bachman has an 0-1-1 record, 6.00 goals against, 7-93 save percentage. And Nelson, of course, still 3-3. 2.67 goals against 9-12 save percentage. And it feels like it's been months since we saw him in action. Uh, goals for and against. Uh, Winnipeg scored 55. They've allowed 44. Vancouver scored 66. They've allowed 76. So the scoring is still decent, but it has come down over the last four or five games because of the fact they're losing. That'll just happen. And the goals against have been creeping up. Uh, Winnipeg 6-3-1 in their last 10. Vancouver, of course, 4-4-2 four, four, in their last 10. On the road, Winnipeg is 3-3. Three three. At home, Vancouver's 5-3-2. Uh, if the playoffs started today, this is kind of a fun thing to look at. It doesn't mean anything. If the playoffs started today, uh, Winnipeg would be number three in the Central. Uh, they'd be on the road against Minnesota. I realize they've got games in hand, but I'm just saying that where the standings are right now. Um... In the Pacific, uh, Vancouver would be number three, and they would be on the road against Calgary. Calgary being number two uh, to start the playoffs. So just an interesting thing I'm doing today, just for something different. Uh, I would expect Winnipeg to win this one. I'm I'm debating with myself as to what I will wear to said game. Uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards Flying V because I think it, it, it has the potential to be an ugly game in favor of Winnipeg. Not because I have a lack of faith in Vancouver, but because between scheduling and, and the injuries, they've started looking very tired. And, uh, yeah. Uh, next up, Dallas coming off of their huge win over the Islanders. I never lost faith for a second. <laughs> so lying. Uh, Dallas 11-7-2 in against the 10-8-2 or New York Rangers. Uh, Dallas's leading scorer is Tyler Sagan, who got it together yesterday. Now he's at six goals, 14 assists. Uh, ben, seven goals, 10 assists. He had three assists yesterday. Radulov, eight goals, seven assists. Klingberg, five goals, eight assists. Spezza, four goals, nine assists. Congratulations on 900 points, Mr. Spezza. Um, Shore, five goals, six assists. 
Dickinson, four goals, four assists. And Essa Lindell, thanks to a couple of goals yesterday, now on the board at three goals, five assists. On the Rangers side of things, Chris Kreider, 11 goals, seven assists, which equals 18 points, not eight. It's late when I do these boards, you know. Uh, Zabenajad, seven goals, 10 assists. Plus, we were watching Ant-Man at the time, so I might have been distracted by what was on the screen. But I, I assure you, Kreider does have 18 points, not eight. Um, Hayes, four goals, nine assists. Pionk, three goals, 10 assists. Howden, four goals, seven assists. Zuccarello, uh, three goals, seven assists. Straight behind VC, who has six goals, four assists. And Butchnevich, of course, who's out right now with injury. Five goals, four assists for the Rangers. Um... You know, looking at it on the surface, this this definitely looks like the Rangers should win it. But you know what? I, I thought the Islanders should have won yesterday. So Dallas has already surprised me once. We'll see if there's another surprise in store or if it was just the one time and they don't have they don't have enough to do it again. Um, but again, if, if the Rangers win in regulation, both teams come out of this game with an 11-8 and record. Um, goaltending on the, on the, uh, Dallas side, no confirmation yet. I would think Hudobin three, two and one record for him. 2.32 goals against 926 save percentage. Bishop eight, five and one record. 2.37 goals against 922 save percentage on the Rangers side. Lundquist is confirmed as starting. He has a seven, six and two record. 2.71 goals against 918 save percentage. Georgiev uh, has a record of 3-2 and two with a 3.60 goals against and an 8.94 save percentage. Goal differentials. Dallas has now scored 52 goals. They've allowed 50. The Rangers have scored 57. They've allowed 64. So the Rangers are getting there. Last 10 games, Dallas is now 6-2-2. Two two. The Rangers are 7-2-1. and one. So the Rangers, as I said, definitely getting there. And at the beginning of them getting hotter... At the beginning of them getting hotter, um, the, a lot of this was via shootout, overtime kind of situation. Now they're they've they've been straight up either winning or losing in regulation over their last few, but uh, it it definitely feels like they're picking up some momentum on the road. Dallas is now four four and one. We'll see if they can get above that four and four record and have more wins than losses on the road. Uh, and the Rangers seven three and zero at home. Right now, if the playoffs started right now, Dallas would be the number one wild card and they would play San Jose in the first round. The New York Rangers are number three in the Metro and they'd play the Islanders, which is a series that we would all really enjoy seeing. All of us. Um, although there are Rangers fans that would say, you know, traditionally that matchup hasn't favored us. My answer to that would be, I'm a Bruins fan. I deal with Montreal regularly. It happens. But uh, it'd be, it would be a very interesting matchup if that occurred right now. Because, you know, neither of those teams were favored to be in the playoffs, much less face each other in the playoffs. So that would that would be fun. That being said, next up, uh, Washington, a team that can ruin that dream. And they can ruin it as quickly as tonight. Let me put it this way. If the Rangers lose in regulation and Washington gets a win, they would pass the Rangers in the standings and suddenly be in the playoffs. Uh, the Capitals are 9-7-3. and three. They will admit they haven't been um, the Capitals yet this year. Uh, they're in against the suddenly 11-6-3 Montreal Canadiens, who have uh, eked out some wins lately. Uh, they've had uh, they've had the odd comeback win here and there, and, and honestly, they're playing really well. Uh, anyways, the leading scorer for the Capitals is Backstrom with 5 goals, 17 assists. Kuznetsov, 6 goals, 15 assists. Ovechkin, 13 goals and 8 assists now for him. Uh, Carlson, five goals, 14 assists. Oshie with nine goals, five assists. Eller has three goals and seven assists. Connolly, two goals, eight assists. And Verana rounds out the top eight with five goals and four assists. On the Montreal side of things, Domi leads the way with 10 goals, 14 assists. Uh, Tatar, uh, nine goals and eight assists. Uh, Drouin, seven goals, 10 assists. Petrie, one goal, 14 assists. Uh, Gallagher, 9 goals, 5 assists. Dano, 1 goal, 10 assists. Kokanyemi, 3 goals, 7 assists. And Lykanen has 2 goals and 8 assists to round out the top top 8 for the Montreal Canadiens. Goaltenders have been confirmed. Holtby's 5-5-2 five, five, and two with a 3.24 goals against 900 save percentage. He will not play tonight. He is still out with an injury. Copley will. He is 4-2-1 and one with a 2.65 goals against and a 908 save percentage. So if he wins tonight and, and does so well... I think we're getting into goalie controversy 
area, but we did last year too with Grubauer and yet Holpe still had a pretty decent, I guess, run in the playoffs. I guess he was okay. I guess Washington was pretty good in the playoffs. Um, and we'll see what happens with that. We're still in November, right? <laughs> Carey Price is starting for Montreal. He has started putting up Carey Price numbers. Uh, his backup will be, will be Niemi, who has a 4-2 and two record. 3.74 goals against, 887 save percentage. Price has a 7-4-3 and three record, 2.92 goals against, 904 save percentage. So save percentage is above 900. Goals against are under 3, and he has a winning record. So all of that says Carey Price. Um, goal differentials, the Capitals have scored 62. They've allowed 62. Highly mediocre numbers for the Capitals. They're looking to improve. On the Montreal side, they've scored 64. They've allowed 65. So Montreal still looking to improve that as well. But the record is fantastic uh, compared to what it was what it was supposed to be. Um, they're both 5-4-1 and one in their last 10. At, at, um, at home, the, the Montreal Canadiens are 6-3-1. and one. That says home, it should say road for the Capitals. Um, and the Capitals currently sit four points out of the playoffs. And yet I look at the numbers and I go, mm, nope. No, they don't. They said two points out of the playoffs. I must have seen somebody else in there. Anyways, um, wild card number two, that would be Montreal, and they would play Tampa in the first round. So that would be a fun series. And between the two right now, because uh, Vasilevsky's out, I would take Montreal over Tampa based on goaltending. Right now. A week ago, I would have taken Tampa. So, these numbers are highly likely to change. Okay, I figured this out. Because I had to go look at it. Because this was driving me nuts. Um, the Capitals are 8 points behind Montreal. But, because they're in the Metro, they're 1 point out of the playoffs. So, they're 8 points behind the number 2 wild card, Or, 1 point out of the playoffs because they're in the Metro. And I know Metro fans get kind of touchy when when we, we talk about the Metro kind of not being a great division, but you, you look at the records and that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, 22, 25, 21. They're four points behind Montreal. Four points behind Montreal. One point. I was looking at somebody else then. Uh, anyways. Yeah, they were four points behind Montreal. I've got, I'm getting ahead of myself here. And yes, that is their road record of 5-3-2. and two. I had to make sure. I'm like, you know what, Shannon? You can't just leave that there. You can't. Now, now we are ready to move on to the next game, which is uh, Florida, 7-7-3. Seven, seven, and three, And they're at 17 points. They are actually 8 points out of the playoffs because <laughs> they're not in the Metro. Um, and, and it's got to be frustrating for Florida. They made up so much ground. Now they get to go in against the 9-8-3 and three Ottawa Senators. You know, that team that nobody gave them a chance. And uh, they, they look like now they, they could very well be in the running. Um, and it's it's been a really, really strange start to the season for, for Ottawa. Of course, the, the Uber driver, that story continues on. I haven't been reporting on it, but it, it continues. For both the driver and the team. Uh, the driver talking about how he wasn't thinking and blah, 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 blah. And he's, you know, he's lost his job and his livelihood and all that other fun stuff. But what it's done to the Senators is, if you go by the word of the players, it's galvanized them. And we'll see if it continues to galvanize them with tonight's game. On Florida side of things, leading them in scoring. Dadnov with an 8-goal and 10-assist record. 18 points, not bad. Uh, he shares that with Hoffman. So Hoffman has been playing very, very well lately. Yandel, 4 goals, 10, 12 assists. Barkov, 5 goals, 10 assists. Huberto, 4 goals, 11 assists. Trocek, 3 goals, 10 assists. Bugstad, 4 goals and 5 assists. And Matheson is on the board with a goal and 6 assists. So for Canuck fans who thought that Matheson was just some, some goon or talentless player, um, he's not. He really isn't. Uh, and I say that as somebody who's watched a lot of Florida games. Uh, do I think he's overpaid? Probably a bit. But he's, he's not a, a guy who lacks talent. On the Ottawa side of things, Duchesne, 8 goals and 16 assists. He's been fantastic lately. Stone, 9 goals, 14 assists. Shabbat, 5 goals, 18 assists. Dezingle, 9 goals, 7 assists. Tierney, 2 goals, 14 assists. White, 6 goals, 6 assists. Ryan, 
Five goals, seven assists. Bodker, two goals and nine assists for him. So that rounds out your top eight for the Ottawa Senators. Goaltenders have been confirmed in this game. Uh, Luongo has a 4-2 and two record, 2.48 goals against, 918 save percentage. And over the last couple of games, well, I, I do think he needs a bit of a rest. So Reimer will be starting. He has a 2-4-1 record, 3.04 goals against, 899 save percentage. And he's been better the last little while than he definitely was early on. Uh, Hutchinson's in the minors. He has a 1-1-2 and two record, 4.17 goals against, 839 save percentage. And on the Ottawa side of things, of course Anderson is starting. This is not news that Anderson is starting. Uh, McKenna will be backing up with 0-1 record, 5.97 goals against, 857 save percentage. Mike Condon, of course, is still in the minors, 0-2 record, 6.38 goals against, 800 save percentage. In a perfect world, I would think that Either they trade for another goalie or Condon refines this game in the American League and comes back up and has a triumphant return to Ottawa. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be tricky either way. Anderson has a 9-5-3 record, 3.55 goals against, 9.07 save percentage. There's some ouch in those numbers. Uh, the fact that he has a 3.55 goals against and a save percentage above 900 shows you just how many shots he is facing per game. Uh, goals for and against. Um... The Florida Panthers are scoring, have scored 53. They've allowed 55. On the Ottawa side, they've scored 70, and they've allowed 81. On the road, Florida's 6-4. and four, Or no, in the last 10, Florida's 6-4. and four. Ottawa's 5-4-1. and one. On the road, Florida's 4-4-2. Four, four and two. And uh, the Ottawa Senators are 7-3-2. and two. So, yeah, the, the Senators are solid at home. They've been decent over their last 10. If you look at the last 10, Florida's been pretty good. But if you look at the last couple, not as much. Florida still sits eight points out of the playoffs. And Ottawa sits four points out of the playoffs behind the Montreal Canadiens. So they will both be watching carefully to see what happens between Washington and Montreal. As it could directly affect how far they are from the playoffs. So, yeah, there you go. Um, next up, Columbus. The very consistent Columbus Blue Jackets. 12-6-2. Uh, they're in against the 14-6. And, and suddenly, once again, one of the best teams in the league, Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, a team that's watching Austin Matthews uh, continuing on pace towards coming back to join the team. Uh, as soon as this coming weekend. We're, I, they haven't given a timeline yet, but this coming weekend is seen as when it would be the earliest he would come back. Uh, they're not really all that worried. I'm sure that, that uh, Leafs and, and their fans are saying, you know what, take your time. We're good. We're good right now. Uh, on the on the Columbus side of things with scoring, Panarin, 5 goals, 16 assists. Atkinson, 12 goals, 8 assists. Dubois, 9 goals, 8 assists. Wierenski, 4 goals, 9 assists. Duclair, 8 goals, 4 assists. Felino 6 goals, 6 assists. Wenberg, 1 goal, 11 assists. And Anderson, 8 goals and 2 assists to get on the board. On the Toronto side, Marner has been amazing. Six goals and 20 assists. He has 26 points in 20 games. And and I tell you, that kid, he is an amazing player. Uh, Riley, nine goals, 16 assists. Savarez, 12 goals, 11 assists. Matthews, 10 goals, six assists. Kapanen, eight goals, six assists. Kadri, seven goals, seven assists. Marlow, four goals, eight assists. And Jake Gardner with a goal and nine assists rounds out the top eight. If you're looking at goaltenders, they've both been confirmed. Corpus Allo is going to be the backup tonight. He has a 5-0-2 record. 3.68 goals against, 8.85 save percentage. Bobrovsky will be starting. His his win-loss record is finally above 500. He has seven wins, six losses. Uh, 2.60 goals against and a 9.17 save percentage. On the Toronto side of things, Sparks will be the likely backup. 3-1 record for him. 3.2 goals against, 9.06 save percentage. Anderson's listed as likely at the time that I'm recording this, not listed as confirmed. Uh, he has an 11-5 and five record, 2.08 goals against, 934 safe percentage. So with guys like Gibson uh, coming down and Vasilevsky getting hurt, Anderson's racking up the Vezina credentials. Uh, Columbus has scored 69 goals and allowed 62. Uh, Toronto has scored 70 and allowed 51. In their last 10, Columbus is 6-2-2. Two, and two. In their last 10, Toronto is 7-3. and three. On the road, Columbus is 7-2-1. and one. At home, Toronto is now 5-5. Five and five. So that, that winless, sad record they had at home, they've wiped that clean. They're back to 500. Um, 
The Columbus Blue Jackets are number one in the Metro. They would face the Boston Bruins in the first round if it took place right now. Uh, the the Toronto Blue, uh, this one throws me off. The Toronto Maple Leafs, who are number two in the division currently, would face Buffalo in the first round. That's what throws me off. Uh, it's so weird to see that and report that, but that's where it is right now. And a Toronto Buffalo series, first off for travel would be so nice and cheap. And second, for rivalry, would be so much fun and give back so much more. So we'll see what happens in this one. This is kind of game of the night material. Although I won't be able to see very much of what goes on tonight because we'll be in transit to go to the Vancouver game. Getting into Vancouver can be a nightmare. So we give ourselves about an hour and a half or two hours to get in there. Um, but this this is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to to seeing how that turns out because Columbus has been on quite a tear and Toronto not shabby themselves over the last couple of weeks. So that'll be very telling. And now it's time to change boards. Alrighty. Um, so coming out of last night, Vegas has got to feel pretty good about themselves, right? They go into Edmonton and they come out of there with a six to three win. They get closer to having an even record. They get a little bit more respectable at a nine, 11 and one record, but they're in against the Flames. The Flames are 11-8-1. Uh, they're coming off of their win over Edmonton as well, which means that uh, we could be in for a very interesting game tonight. Uh, when you look at Vegas' scoring, it is led by Marcia so with 10 goals, 8 assists, followed by Carlson, who has 5 goals now after a goal last night and 11 assists. Tuck with 5 goals and 7 assists is uh, still climbing the board. Eakin, 8 goals and 3 assists. Smith now has 4 goals and 6 assists. So while Smith hasn't uh, put up the kind of totals he did last year, last night helps. He needs another one of those nights to get him really up there. Uh, Theodore, two goals, eight assists. Miller with nine assists gets on the board. And Holden has two goals and five assists. He's on there as well. Um, on the Calgary side of things, Lindholm leads the way with 11 goals and 10 assists, followed by Monaghan at 10 goals and 11 assists. Kachuk, nine goals, 12 assists. Goudreau, six goals, 14 assists. Giordano, two goals, 16 assists. Backlund, three goals, seven assists for Leak with seven goals. And Hannafin on the board with seven assists. If Noah Hannafin can really get things going for Calgary, it would probably be greatly appreciated, I would think. Um, goaltenders, only one confirmed. I would think uh, Subban would start here. I don't know how much confidence Gerard Gallant would have in him right now. And since they need every win they can get, if Fleury says, yeah, coach, I can play, he might very well get the start here. Uh, Flurry 9-8-1 with a 2.63 goals against and a 9-0-1 save percentage. Subban 0-3, 3.17 goals against, 8.85 save percentage. On the Calgary side, the backup who is now the starter, Riddick is, is playing. 6-1 record, 1.92 goals against, 9.33 save percentage. Uh, Smith is the backup. He has a 5-7-1 record, 3.48 goals against, 8.76 save percentage. You know, it's funny that um, I'm watching, I'm trying to think of a sports or TSN. And uh, a couple others, I know on, on Fox Sports I've heard it, where they're talking about the backups in Calgary and, and Edmonton. Uh, this backup in Calgary, Riddick, he may have played less games, but he really at this point is their starter. Um, yes, Smith will be given chances to win back that job. It won't be in big games. I, I can't see it. I really think, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised Smith isn't starting tonight, but you know, just because I, I think the really important games I think are going to go to Riddick. Because you've got to make the playoffs. You can't afford to miss the playoffs again. Um, goals for and against. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights have 49 goals for and 57 against. Calgary has 62 goals for and 60 against. On the road um, is is a bit of a, a, we'll get to it. Over their last 10, Vegas is 4 and 6. Calgary 6, 3 and 1. On the road, Vegas is 4 and 8. And at home, Calgary is 5, 3 and 1. Vegas currently sits five points out of the playoffs, whereas Calgary, they're number two in the Pacific, as I mentioned, and they would play Vancouver in the first round if the playoffs started today. Just a fun thing. Not something I'm going to do every day, obviously. Just a fun thing to look at. Um, and again, I know that you know certain teams have played a lot less games, and they would, they would get in there in all likelihood, in theory, based on their games in hand. But I would point to teams that had games in hand last year that didn't end up winning those games in hand. So uh, for the Flames, it's a big game tonight. Uh, I expect uh, probably a lot of goals in this, especially if Subban goes in. 
I have a funny feeling Subban goes in here, but we'll see. Because as I said, they need every win they can get, and I think as long as Flurry says, yeah, I can go, I think he'll get the shot at it. Uh, next up, Buffalo. Uh, I, I think they've now emerged as the number one surprise of this young season. Uh, all With all due respect to the Montreal Canadiens, I think Buffalo's a bigger surprise. At 12-6-2. They're in against the fading Pittsburgh Penguins, who are 7-8-3, and, and it's weird. That means Pittsburgh's lost 11 out of 18 games, and yet most of us are still saying, eh, but they'll come back. It's Pittsburgh. They'll find their way back. Not really thinking Pittsburgh's going to miss the playoffs because they always somehow find their way back. This year, as I've said recently, is starting to feel really different, but they certainly have the, the, the man power to do it. Now, uh, scoring-wise on the Buffalo side, Eichel, four goals, 18 assists for him. So he has been picking up a lot of assists. Uh, Skinner, 14 goals and seven assists. Palmonville, nine goals and eight assists. So Palmonville last year started really fast and then faded quickly. I even had a video where I talked about how Palmonville was off to a fast start and I said he's not going to be able to keep this up. This year feels more sustainable because look at who his line mates are. It's amazing. Uh, Ocposo, five goals, six assists. Reinhardt, two goals, nine assists. Sherry, six goals, four assists. Darlene, that's right. Rasmus Darlene is on the board with two goals and eight assists. Uh, and anybody will tell you he started playing like what we'd expected. Uh, Ristolainen, two goals and seven assists. And Ristolainen's probably feeling a lot less pressure now than what he was before. On the Pittsburgh side of things, Malkin, seven goals, 18 assists. Kessel, nine goals, 14 assists. Crosby, eight goals and 11 assists. Latang five goals, nine assists. Gensel with six goals, six assists. Hornquist, eight goals, three assists. Simone with four goals, six assists, and Alexiak with four goals and four assists is still in the top eight. Uh, goaltenders have been confirmed. Olmark's going to be the backup. He has a 4 one record, 2.65 goals against, 9.22 save percentage. Not too shabby. Uh, behind uh, Hutton, who's 8-6-1, 2.52 goals against, 9.18 save percentage. So solid numbers. Not, not Vezina numbers, but solid numbers, which is really all you're looking for if you're Buffalo at this stage. Uh, Murray's going to be the backup for Pittsburgh. Uh, 4.51 goals against, 4.08 goals against, and an 8.77 safe percentage. There's a lot of yuck in the numbers for Matt Murray right now. Uh, DeSmith, 3-3-2 three, three and two record, 2.25 goals against, 9.30 safe percentage. Um, so DeSmith, it's, it's his job by default. Uh, Homer Simpson will tell you those are the two sweetest words in the English, English language. Um... Goals for and against, Buffalo scored 58, they've allowed 56. Surprisingly, Pittsburgh scored 60 and allowed 59. So that's the surprise, is that when you look at goal differential, there's only one goal difference between Buffalo and Pittsburgh. And yet, when you look at the record, more than a one goal difference there. Um, on the, In their last 10, Buffalo 6-2-2. Two, two. Pittsburgh's 2-7-1, which is starting to impact their chances of getting anywhere. Uh, on the road... The uh, Buffalo Sabres are 6-4-1. Pittsburgh's 3-5-1 at home. Uh, Pittsburgh has 17 points, so they're 5 points out. Again, uh, I, I rated the points out as a po by Montreal. I looked at the number two wild card, and I said, okay, this is how far they are behind the wild card. Forgot, they're in the Metro. They're closer to the playoffs than that. <clears throat> so right now, with 17 points, they are 4 points back of the Rangers. I'll say it would take 5 points to get them into the playoffs. Uh, right now, Buffalo is number three in the Atlantic, and they play Toronto in the first round. And and not only would that be a fun series from a travel perspective, but how great would that be for Leaf fans? Buffalo's right there, and yeah, they, they would take that in a heartbeat. Yeah, no problem. Uh, next up, the LA Kings, 6-12-1. and one. Uh, Unraveling before our very eyes, they're in against the 7-8-3 St. Louis Blues, who are also unraveling before our eyes. Uh, we can call this the battle for Hughes, the lose for Hughes cup, uh, whatever you'd like to call it. These teams have both been kind of, kind of poor and considering that Vegas looks like they might be turning the corner, having won two of their last three, um, they could come down to St. Louis and LA who ends up worst in the West. Uh, on the St. Louis, or on the LA side of things with scoring Kovalchuk, five goals and nine assists. He's been stuck on that for a few games. Uh, Toffoli, five goals, six assists. 
Carter, four goals, six assists. Doughty, one goal, nine assists. Ayafalo, four goals, five assists for him now. Kopitar, five goals, three assists. Uh, Brown, three goals, three assists. And Martinez, one goal, five assists. But still, 19 games into the season and six points gets you as high as seventh on their on their, on their their scoring chart. It's not good enough. Um, on the St. Louis side of things, O'Reilly, 10 goals and 13 assists. Tarasenko, six goals, 10 assists. Perron, five goals, six assists. Bozak, three goals, eight assists. Steen, five goals, five assists. Shen, four goals, six assists. Schwartz, two goals, seven assists. And Dunn, with three goals and five assists, uh, rounds out the top eight for St. Louis. Goaltending. St. Louis has been confirmed. L.A. has not. Do you go with Peterson again? You know what? I do. Uh, they're, they're pretty far out of the playoffs. Peterson's played well. Yeah, go ahead. Throw him in and, and give him that start. Uh, Campbell's 5-7. and seven. He's out. 2.33 goals against, 9.23 save percentage. Budai, 0-1, 5.5 goals against, 8.33 save percentage. Those scary numbers for Budai make it easier to put Peterson in net. Uh, quick, 0-3-1 record, 4.55 goals against, 8.45 save percentage. He, of course, is out for a while to come. Uh, Peterson, 1-1 one one record, 2.27 goals against, 9.35 save percentage. Those numbers are solid. Give the kid another shot. It doesn't hurt. On the St. Louis side of things, Johnson's the backup, 2-4 and four record, 2.41 goals against, 9.16 save percentage. And Allen will be starting because what, do you, what else are you going to do? Chad Johnson won't get you to the playoffs. Uh, if Allen can heat up and get everything together, he could. Uh, Johnson or Allen five four and three record three point five one goals against eight ninety save percentage, which is better than what it was. It was in the eight seventies not that long ago. Uh, goal differentials: uh, the L.A. Kings thirty eight goals for sixty one against St. Louis fifty six four fifty seven against. The last ten L.A.'s four and six St. Louis is five and five. On the road L.A. is two and six. At home, St. Louis is 5-5-1. Five, five, and one. The Kings are 11 points out of the playoffs. St. Louis with 15 points. No, they have more than 15. They have 17 points. They're 7 points out of the playoffs. So again, this could be the, the, the lose for Hughes Cup. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a fun time right now if you're a St. Louis or L.A. fan. But this game could be a lot of fun to watch because uh, there could be a lot of frustration. And you know what? When a team has a bad record like this, there should be. This is one of those times when you're looking for that fight. You're looking for that, that pushback. You're looking for that pride. Been looking for that with L.A. for the last couple of weeks, and I thought maybe they were getting it when Brown, or yeah, when Dustin Brown came back, but it started to fade again. Uh, next up, and finally, last but not least, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Nashville Predators are previewing the Stanley Cup tonight. Potentially, yes. They are both 14-5-1. They are both on pace for 56-57 wins. Because um, it's an 82-game season, it doesn't end in a nice number. Technically, it's 56 if you go to game 80. Uh, so you assume they'll win probably one out of those other two, 57 Maybe they win two, it's 58. Or maybe they lose both because they don't need the win, so it's 56. Um, when you look at the Tampa Bay Lightning scorers, the leader is Braden Point, 14 goals and 10 assists. You want to talk about guys you should get paid, and we talk a lot about Marner. Point is another one of those guys. He is absolutely deadly out there. Uh, Kucherov, 7 goals, 16 assists. Gord, 11, 8 goals, 12 assists. Stamco, 6 goals, 11 assists. Miller, 5 goals, 10 assists. Johnson, 7 goals, 7 assists. McDonough, uh, 1 goal, 11 assists for him. And Kalorn is on the board with 2 goals and 8 assists for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, on the Nashville side of things, Forsberg, 12 goals, 6 assists. Johansson, 3 goals, 15 assists. Turris, 4 goals, 11 assists. Yossi, 5 goals, 9 assists. Arvidsson, 8 goals, 5 assists. Subban, 2 goals, 10 assists. Ekholm, 3 goals, 8 assists. And Ellis, to round out the defenseman scoring, 10 assists for him. So four out of their top eight scorers are defensemen. Raise your hand if you're surprised. Put it down, you're not. Uh, goaltenders have not been confirmed for Tampa. It's Demang. I can't see it not being Demang tonight. Vasilevsky, of course, is out with his 9-3-1 record. 2.29 goals against, 9.27 save percentage. Louis Demang has a 5-2 record. 3.58 goals against, 8.89 save percentage. So focus on the win-loss record. Don't focus on the rest of the numbers with Demang. 
Uh, if you're looking for a starter from Nashville, Renee's your guy. Soros will be backing him up. Soros has a 7-3 and three record. 2.94 goals against, 903 save percentage. Pekka Rene, 7-2-1 record, 1.67 goals against, and a 943 save percentage. Pretty tidy numbers there for the Nashville Predators goaltender. Uh, goal, goal differentials. The uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, 73 goals for, 58 goals against. Nashville, 67 goals for, 46 goals against. And if you look at the record in their last 10, Tampa Bay 7-3 and, and Nashville 6-3-1. and one. On the road, Tampa's 7-2-1 and one, and at home, Nashville's now 6-3. and three. I believe they've won their last three in a row at home. Um, they're both first in their division. The uh, Tampa Bay Lightning would play Montreal if the playoffs started today. The first place in the central Nashville Predators would play Colorado if the playoffs started today. And you want to talk about a potentially nasty series, just put Nashville and Colorado on the ice together and uh, watch the fur fly. Um, anyways, as I said at the start of this, uh, these playoff matchups are based on what they'd be right now. And we know that's going to change because they're, the schedule is so wonky. There are so many teams that have games in hand. And like in Vancouver's case, they've played so many more games than some of the other teams. I can't see Vancouver making the playoffs, but right now they're in. And uh, they would play uh, the Calgary Flames. So it's kind of a fun thing to look at. It's something we will be looking at when we reach American Thanksgiving. That, that imaginary line through which a lot of the time uh, the playoffs are decided. It's seedings will change, but who's in and out of the playoffs very often is decided. But I'm going to do some madness on that to see just how accurate that is. All right. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just have it upon this video. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below as always. I'll talk to you again soon.